here's a, a little Brussels sprout. Just hooker's green um, and titanium white mixed together. Of course, you could always mix your green, ultramarine blue and chamomile light, plus a little bit of a, of a brownish tone or whatever for the greens. And then you can mix this, you know, kind of grayish brown color for the, the center. But it's flat, right? It's all one temperature of green. And it's just like a pretty flat shadow too. There's nothing wrong with this other than the fact that it looks a little flat, a little dead, and it's subtle. If I add a color temperature shift to it by, let's say you finish this one and you, after the fact, go, ooh, I didn't use any color temperature shift, you could glaze a warmer value or one warmer color on top. Let's say I have a, a warm light source and a cool shadow or something like that. I could always glaze and glazing just means you have a very watered down color like Indian yellow or cadmium yellow light. And I can buy glazing medium, which is the best thing to do for acrylic painters. For my oil painters, you could use, if your painting is bone dry, add a little bit of your fast dry medium to that color, you know, make it very translucent. You could rub it on just in that one spot or you could use a brush very softly and then rub it off where needed. So you could, you could do that after the fact, or you could paint it on as you're working. So here, this is a very warm Brussels sprout, but again, it doesn't, even though I had one that was cool and one that was warm, it still doesn't work because it's flat, whether it's all warm or all cool. What I want to do is I wanted to paint it a little cooler in the shadow and notice the difference between glazing and painting directly. It feels richer when you paint it in, but you can always glaze. It's just that glazing can tend to lead it to look, it does feel like an after effect. When I'm painting it directly, it, I see the strokes in some bluish greens here, some yellowy greens here. So that I've got that, that combination of greens, not just one green, but a combination of greens. And to me, that feels much richer. So if you look at this sky carefully, it's different colors. It goes from pink to green to yellow. But you can barely tell because it's the same value and they're all fairly desaturated. So there's a pink area that goes kind of, kind of a yellowy area that goes to kind of a greenish gray. But they're exactly the same value. And what happens is it gives you more of an iridescent feel, just subtly. It makes the color looks like it's, like it's kind of shifting or gleaming without noticing it. And you guys can all come up and look at this very carefully. This was painted as a grisaille. I painted it in grays and then painted it on top of it in the colors roughly like what I saw in the photo. Now, if I want to just make up color, if I say, what would happen if I did a yellow sky and purple water? I just have to make sure my values are right and check out what happens. It works. It just feels like a different type of day, a different time of day. I've got purple in my water. I'm using yellows for the reflection of the sky. Again, I've got multiple values of, of similar, or sorry, multiple colors of a similar value in the sky. This is like a way for us to be able to help us find the right value in color and not let saturation get the best of us. Okay, so I can do it in one of two ways. Nowadays, what I do is I take my photo and I put my piece of plastic over it and I can say, okay, let's see if I can mix the right pink for this thing. Hmm, let's try that blue in there. And let's put that value here. I'm, I'm gonna intentionally put it in the wrong place. Watch this. If I put it there, look at how dark it is. You can see it. We know it's too dark. Wipe it off. Yeah, no, but, but that's what you want. Now I'm gonna put it again. It's gonna be too dark again. So it's not as dark, but you can still see it easily, especially when you squint. So I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna add more white. And I gotta wipe off my brush because I got lots of that dark still on it. Now when I squint, it disappears. I don't see my mark anymore. So that is the color I need for that highlighted part of the, the flower. So this, this clear translucency helps me find the right color and the right value but mainly the value, that's the most important thing. You know, I can break the color a little bit, but when I'm looking at my flower in particular, inside the petals, you know, these petals are kind of crowding around like a little cabbage, like my little Brussels sprout really. And inside, those pinks are bouncing around off of each other. They get really warm, 
okay? So they're bouncing around. Imagine things that are enclosed, getting really warm and bouncing around. So those pinks in there, oh, that's just mm, vibrant reds, yum, yum, yum. But then outside of my flower, what's bouncing around outside of that flower? It's all these greens. Mm -hmm. So my, my reds are kind of influenced by the greens. So those reds, well now those are turning a little purpley, a little cooler, maybe even have a hint of green in them here and there because they're bouncing off of that. That's true with everything you're painting. I used to have a piece of paper on my easel, I tell people all this all the time, that I would say, is it dark enough? Is it warm enough? Is it cool enough? Is it saturated enough? You know, there's all these questions you've got to kind of run through yourself, run over with yourself when you're looking at something. And if you don't know for sure, ask me over and I'm happy to, tr to look at it and assess it as well. Again, it's always subjective. We're gonna see things a little differently, so it's okay if you don't agree with me. But kind of look at it and assess where it's gonna go. And then once you mix the color that you feel is right, the nice thing about doing a painting like this is I can just now paint this right on top. So I gotta mix that pink again here, that nice light pink. Here's my little highlight area. It's almost like paint by number now that I have this grisaille because all I'm doing is I'm painting over everything I've already done, but I have this color here and I just wanna make sure it's the same value as the area I just painted over. So if it looks dark, again, I'm gonna do this intentionally wrong, nobody panic. If I paint this on top of that and I squint my eyes, the value seems kind of right, but if I do this and paint it over top, it's a vibrant color, but it's way too light. You can see it, even when you squint your eyes, probably from the back of the room, you can still see that dot better than that dot because the value is, is way off. The color temperature, that's something you're gonna have to assess because the value won't help you there. It's going to be about seeing what's around things. Really think about the context, the relationship of things. You know, again, this flower is sitting in a field of green. So the outer edges of this flower are gonna be tinged with that green. They're gonna be getting that reflected light of green off of them. The inside of the flower should be warmer because it's reflecting all that red and pink back on itself.